How are we doing in the beginning? Like, what's the very first? Just wing it? Just wing it. You can't buy an electric Porsche, you know? Yeah. Cool, man. Wait, let me uh, catch Live. myself. Dude, get your breath, get uh, get your head straight. and It's straight, I think. Yeah, okay, ready to dive into it. Welcome back, Z-Med. I'm ready. Happy to have you, man. Uh, be dude, been, been a little bit since our last episode. I took a little bit of time off, um, so it's been a bit since our last podcast and been a few months since, since we last had you on the show, man. So, yeah, super happy to link back up, get back together. My guy, Vince, I missed you too, bro. What's up, dude? I'm How back. are you? Good. Good. Okay. What? Uh, let's dive right into just relevant topics. Unless you guys have any like introductory stuff you want to hit, which I don't. Um, Good to go. A little bit of like just continued industry spotlight. Uh, over the last several months, man, going back to like when the con consoles brought like all that spotlight onto resellers, it was, I feel like it was um, GPUs, consoles brought all the spotlight onto just like scalpers and reselling and then there was the joe herbert and herbert situation with nike um the nike exec and herbert and now the this isn't so much about like resellers but still like our industry a bit the lil nas x mischief debacle with nike and those like the satan shoes uh they were i believe that they were formally called so yeah what are you guys opinions on that I have, I, have a, I have a lot. I, I have a lot of thoughts on that. So I honestly don't. Okay. Like, I understand uh, what happened. I know he collabed with the same company that made like the Jesus shoes. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, I don't know what they were actually called. Like the, they were the, they were called like the Jesus the shoes. Jesus. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know that they came back, made the hell shoe, whatever. Yeah, the they Satan were shoes. The Satan shoe. Yep. And uh, yeah, I don't. I know they got a lawsuit. That's pretty much all I got. I didn't oh, look into it much. Okay, heard about it everywhere. Yeah, For sure, same. it blew the it blew up so big, dude. It's, yeah, it got it's huge. insane. Um, I, I guess a few things. So mischief, it's like M S C H F, right, bro? Those they uh they really run with the whole like controversial they they've had several controversial marketing campaigns they're good at marketing bro they get their they blast it out dude like they blast their brand out everywhere do you remember that thing they did with like the hundred dollar box and yes if you didn't i do return refund or something you got a thousand a thousand that was yep. them oh, yes that was, that was them, them. yeah yeah cool. yep. what happened with that yeah. i don't know i don't they know they went either. out of stock in like a second was remember it a scam it or no? quick. i don't know it wasn't a scam i just don't think that anyone actually like was able to buy a box that I that I remember. Yeah, I think remember, like no but it, but they them. hyped that whole release up. I they, that. they they hyped the whole thing up, and it was posted on all the cook groups. They're yeah. good at getting their brand name out there, man. They did it with the the Jesus shoes. Got um a, a good amount of headlines. Those did receive like mainstream news headlines. Mm -hmm. but the lack of controversy it just didn't get anywhere as big as the satan shoes did yeah so they yeah. did the jesus shoes they did the mystery box which um I, yeah i want to say exactly like how you described vince where it was you know the box is a hundred and you can open it for a mystery or if you hold it or keep it sealed for like 90 days or something you or you return it for a thousand then you return it to, to them for a thousand dollars so that was a uh, really successful I, I would say marketing campaign got a lot of attention on them um these Satan shoes were insane how much they got their brand blasted out to the entire world. And literally, dude, like a week afterwards, a week after all the controversy, they sponsored, uh, I watched like a new Mr. Beast video. You guys know Mr. Beast? Yeah. Like one of the biggest YouTubers on track to be like the biggest YouTuber in the world. He, uh, Mischief sponsored his whole video. Really? Oh, yeah, bro. Their branding was all, bro. They're like really rooted. I mean, they are they are successfully marketing their brand. Um, wow. The controversy that they stirred up with the Saint Shoe thing, I it's hard to imagine that they would have known it would get that big, but they knew what they were doing as far as just like controversial marketing. And they shipped it out like they knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, like the they kind of yeah. You're dude, you're right. They yeah. definitely took the hmm. steps. Kind of as if they knew that Nike was gonna like crack the whip on them. But yeah. yeah, basically, dude, they like 
they took orders and then they, according to them and according to like the lawsuit documents, they fulfilled orders within a matter of like hours. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone got them. Yeah, like in, I saw them. in they, hand. Are they yeah. reselling for a lot or do you know? Well, I, I, I saw, no I know like eBay doesn't, do they, you can't sell them on eBay anymore, I don't oh, really? believe. At first they were selling for like 2200 on eBay. What was retail? 1000 1500 No, retail? Yeah. yeah, I think it was a thousand or eleven hundred or something. Okay, maybe okay. I want to say the Jesus shoes the Jesus was fifteen hundred or fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just assumed that they were. I didn't I try to buy these ones, that, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's really crazy, man. It's it's hard to imagine that they knew that it was gonna get this big, but I I think that they knew that they were gonna stir up some crazy controversy with it. Um, like the human blood element is. It, like yeah. the fact that they did like wh whatever one drop of human blood. Yeah. It's it, like the Yeezy thing where they say they use the algae from like Yeezy's like uh, Kanye's farm in Wyoming or whatever. Oh, okay. They probably literally put like this much algae in this huge vat. Yeah. You know what they the mold. Yeah. You, know you know what they say he does out there? What? Mine's crypto. No. I'm serious. Are you kidding me? Th that's like a huge rumor. Is that a Kanye? Huge rumor. A, a, a big common rumor is that Kanye has a massive mining facility on his property in Wyoming. Oh, because isn't electricity cheap? I would there? imagine so. I've never looked, but now yeah. I gotta look. Isn't that crazy, dude? Imagine that imagine he's a whale. Kanye has the biggest mining <laughs> he's a huge, operation. He's a huge <laughs> whale, and, no, and uh, I'm eat. not a billionaire. I'm a fifty billion c crypto it, coin guy. You know, it's right. Seriously, I have dude. A million of the bitcoins. That's funny, bro. <laughs> I I. Wouldn't be surprised. He's so smart. He owns the original one million that have never. He, yeah, he's got the original wallet of a million yeah. coins. That's so wild, dude. Um, so the, as a result, hmm. what what happened was um, there was a controversy with the Lil Nas X thing. There was like you know a music video release. There was all, all types of controversy surrounding like the shoes and and how they released them, hmm. and normal consumers assumed that Nike produced these shoes or that Nike yeah. like allowed for these shoes to be to be made or recreated and f just for uh brand and public image sake Nike then as a result sued Mischief L Lil Nas X I think it was formerly a suit against Mischief and uh that was just like a PR lawsuit in my opinion like right. th there wasn't money they weren't going to make money from the suit i mean obviously they were just going to lose money from the suit no matter what whether it was like lawyer fees or you know just the cost of doing business because frankly there wasn't a ton of revenue generated from the sneakers themselves like as far as nike goes that's a drop in the bucket right yeah. but for them just the public image like they don't want the whole world thinking that they signed off on shoes with blood in the midsole mm -hmm. you know what i mean they can't yeah. Cannot have that. They can't afford that type of bad PR. So yeah, that lawsuit went through and it actually executed like super, super fast. Yeah. Um, like how how quickly everything concluded. Basically, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, but uh, as far as the conclusions of the suit, I believe Nike sued them. Mischief them was like, hey, we already fulfilled all the orders. I, you know, we don't know what to tell you. And then. But the Nike suing mischief, that headline got so much prominence that everyone then realized that, oh, okay, Nike didn't sign off on, on these shoes. Yeah. And then they basically came to an agreement of like, if anyone wants to return the those shoes, the Satan shoes, then mischief has to give them a, offer them a full refund and then turn over those shoes to Nike. But they don't have to recall the shoes. I wonder what, like, what's going to happen. I mean, there's so many people that do custom shoe stuff. Like, yeah. golf, they'll take a Nike, just a Jordan 1, and turn it into a golf shoe and then sell that or custom shoes. Yeah. Like, where do they draw the line? I mean, because you custom, well, you I mean, can. Guys custom cars and they custom all kinds you of You can't, yeah, yeah leg product, like. legally. And that's why, right from the rip, when Nike, when the lawsuit was first announced, everyone just knew it was a PR suit because yeah. it's like Nike doesn't really have a leg to stand on as far as suing an original creator for yeah, like an art, it, it like makes, an artistic spin on one of their weird. products. Um, as long as it's being sold, not as, a, like, the, as long as the artist or mischief in this case is like, saying clearly what it is like yeah, this is Nike. yeah this, this is, is not nike yeah. this was i bought a nike shoe, nike shoe and, and i and i yeah. 
did my own art to it and it's a custom like yeah. that is legal right so yeah and and that's basically the the conclusion of the suit and, and i think that nike got what they were looking for was like they were able to ride the coattails of the headlines into the uh, lawsuit headlines, which then let everyone know they're not okay with the shoes. We didn't put blood in our midsoles. Yeah, everyone's happy at that point. So um, what is – was Warren Lotus saying, like, this is a Nike dunk? Um, Like, why – Because his weren't Nike, but they were based Based on a of, Nike dunk. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Why didn't he situation. just take – Nike dunks because then- how could you scale that to because think about how many shoes he was selling was he selling a lot I don't a lot. remember like he was selling volume. I know like 10 to 15 thousand of that later one right but so, the earlier ones he could have he could have got a 500 so to I mean, thousand dunks a thousand, and then named it the Warren Lotus but, dude imagine like think about the the process of getting a thousand or ten thousand already existing shoes yeah. and then customizing them, repackaging, rebranding, rather than just like ground up in in a warehouse, like a you know, uh, yeah. ba- basically just like yeah, that that's what he did. So was he weird. just w- one of those? I'm sure rep companies, like a big. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, what found com- a production out, you know, in China and got to produce yeah, for yeah, nothing. Got produce, yeah, e- exactly. Which I think is, uh, yeah, and that's definitely why he was able to get sued hmm. because Nike, uh, Nike has in their like patents and trademarks and whatnot that you can see like the actual silhouette. Yeah, the design. Yeah, the course. design of the silhouette. Yeah. But dude, uh, with the mischief thing, did you see? I guess like the Jordan One silhouette, they only patented the design for it like in 2018. <laughs> it was just like a oh, couple really? of years ago, bro. Like, uh, but yeah, the, the dunk they, yeah, but the dunk silhouette they've had for a long time, for the longest time. So yeah, that that was interesting. Just the Jordan huh. one. I I would think I that they that. would do that right from the rip. But uh, yeah, the mischief Lil Nas X thing was crazy. It's it just it was very similar to the Nike VP situation. How like all of your normal friends in the real world knew about, like everyone knew about this. Yeah, dude. The optics. Yeah, the optics. Exactly. So I had so many people hitting me up like, Hey, what do you think about this? Are you selling these? And I'm just like, yeah. Same. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Another example of like something from our industry that just like got larger than life. Is this guy in your group? Right. Is this guy? Yeah. Is this guy, is this mischief guy in your group? Is this one of your guys? No, they said that about the the other guy, you know, uh, Oh, Joe, Joe Herbert. Joe Herbert. Yep. Yep. Um, (laughs) That's crazy man yeah, yeah it's uh stuff's been hot there's been big big industry news with with cards as well recently man like huge rippling changes uh in in the hobby biggest biggest that i can think of off the top of my head is is obviously like psa um yep. no longer accepting subs or the vast majority of submissions they're no longer accepting if you want to go into just a little bit of detail like yeah what, what's the deal with psa like in their current state yeah, so PSA actually changed maybe like, well, they got new ownership. Um, okay. When did yeah. that happen? Uh, I didn't know they maybe. got new ownership. Oh, yeah, that? maybe 900 million three bucks. Three months, two months ago, three months ago. And yeah. they, they come in and they double prices instantly for like everything. So um, smart. That's what I would do as a new yeah. PSA owner. Yeah. So did they also buy Supreme, this company? <laughs> right. <laughs> Are they going to sell so, in a couple of years? So they come in, double Seriously. prices, see what's going to happen. And now we know kind of what they were doing. They were doing a test month. They yep. do it on like the 1st of February or something like that. They mm-hmm. raise prices. And then they wait a month. And then March 1st comes around. And they were getting more subs than they were before yeah. is what they come out. And they're like, well, we've got to do something. So they shut down submissions for all the value. Uh, all of the regular submissions, economy, express, which is all just the lower, not all low, low end, but right. Low ish. end, like and $20 then, to like hundred dollars. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now the cheapest you can do is 300, which is called super express. It would cost you $300. What's the turnaround yeah, time? Wait, how long does that take? Uh, it's been taking me, I think about a week door to door. Maybe that's yeah, it. Really? About a week door, maybe a week and a half door to door. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so been, they're it's bumping been that's really fast. I, mean, I didn't know that they were doing anything that fast. Oh yeah. And then they also have higher end ones than that. Like they have walk through where they pretty much walk, you know, walk the card through and get it done. Right. Um, that's very extreme. And that would, be, that would be like a, like a, yeah, hundred thousand dollar card yeah, yeah, or something, yeah. or something that you literally bring down there yourself. Yeah. Like, like it's so valuable. Like I know yeah. Ken, Ken Golden, if you know him, the yep. owner of Golden, Golden Auctions. Golden Auctions guy. Yeah. Yep. He, do, he does that. He'll fly to PSA with all the different cards that he gets and then gets them slabbed, I believe. And then Bosh comes shit. back. Yeah. So where do sick. you get these like cards that are 
worth getting like paying three hundred dollars for um graded uh, like, you know, it needs to be a th- like four, you, five, six thousand. Are you buying raw yeah, grade you buying or like from packs? Um, for me, I've been buying BGS and SGC cards and then cracking them out of the case. For and real? Then send, and then sending. Yeah. Is um, there that mu- like uh, wh- when you're doing that cross like it's called cross grading? Yeah. C- kind, yeah. What's it called? Is cross grading, I believe, is if you leave it in the slab and you send it, but I don't like to oh. do that, and most people don't because you know PSA setting. They'll be biased that they see that eight point five. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. yeah from Wait, um, so PGS. do you have to be super? Is there like a technique to cracking them out of the case? Yeah, you pretty much. I mean, use pliers and scissors. I mean, and so pliers and a screwdriver. Just want PSA that much more than yeah. PGS so like, I cracked a Juan Soto. Uh, you guys aren't gonna know what it is, but yeah, Juan Soto Bowman Chrome Auto, um, and it was a not a bgs9 i think did yeah, you BGS, tweet this I yeah, I yeah i saw, I saw this, this. Yeah. a bgs9 turned into a psa9 which is what i wanted i spent maybe three thousand on it or so and now it's five thousand ish i think 47 Ju- just from the different label on yeah, the case wait it went from a BGS9. nine and is a nine in yeah. psa yep it's Holy crazy crap. that's insane uh, yeah so do a lot of stuff like that and then there's also raw cards out there that are good mostly hmm. like new products so like if you're buying select yeah Select football, you know, that just released. Yep. High end prism. So a lot of good one. raw copies on there. But if you're buying, like, you don't want to buy raw cards from 2018 that are super high end for the most part because, you know, that stuff's probably been looked over a bunch and right. it would be graded if it was If it was a 10. Yeah. Well, so there, maybe they graded it, got an 8, and tore it out of the Yeah, case. they could definitely do stuff yeah. like that. That's like a, there's like a rule. Uh, it, it's crazy. This has a lot of like impacts and it'll have some like short term and long term impacts on on the aftermarket on eBay like for example there is always a, a rule right like never buy raw cards from someone from a seller that sells graded cards and the reason is is like pretty simple just that if someone sells graded cards like it means they've got an eye for it and like you said if it's a 10 or a strong 9 or whatever like they're probably going to submit it themselves get that grade back um you know why would they sell it raw it doesn't make sense but now that's kind of like out the window a little bit because someone could be a slab seller, like they sell everything mm-hmm. slab graded, but now they just can't they can't really submit uh, the majority of their stuff anymore. So there's just more raw on the on the aftermarket. What's that gonna do? To uh, th- it's interesting, man. This happened like PSA made this change um, and decision at a really busy time of year for like sports card releases with mm-hmm. Prism NBA, Select NFL, just like a lot of products hitting consumers hands right now. Obviously Pokemon products are still continuing to be pumped out. So what what's that going to do because normally if you have a large percentage of like Charizards being submitted to PSA but now they're all raw on eBay, what's that going to do like to long-term consequences? I don't know. I'm just spitballing, but yeah, it uh, it is it is crazy. It is a uh, I don't know. What do you what do you think about all like the? Do you think there's gonna be just a ton more raw on eBay, or are people gonna be going to secondary grading companies? Like I think some people are trying secondary grading companies, but like like my intentions was almost to use SGC. Like a lot of people will put it PSA, BGS, yeah, SGC. And then maybe like, you know, HGA or some of the other companies. But mm-hmm. in my opinion, I like SGC more. Why? Uh, than BGS. I don't know. I think BGS cards are ugly. Really? Yeah. And I don't like the process. I don't like how so they do it. So do you buy that. SGC? Like if you had a nine SGC, you'd send that too? Like if you bought it off eBay? Send SGC, that where? To, to SGC, would you send it to PSA to try to get a grade there? Uh, yeah, like sometimes. It, it's very cards. depending on the card, you know, yeah. how I think it looks and stuff. Okay. Um. But BGS grades weird, so it, they grade so strict. on subgrades. Yeah, I know. Right. So it's like, so like a card can be look awful, mm-hmm. but if it has all high subgrades except the one low subgrade, um, It'll it can still grade. grade. It can still grade high, which I just think is a flaw system. That does, yeah, that's strange. And then SGC, they were twenty five dollars a card, and then they tripled prices as soon as PSA changed. Like the like the next day, the next or something? day, like it was April first. Yeah, yeah, April first they uh um wow. tripled tripled That's prices. Funny. But now I saw, you know, card collector too. Yep. Um I saw he is offering SGC grading at 
thirty-five dollars a card. Oh, so, I so the bulk guys maybe have crazy. Maybe rates. they have like I honestly didn't look into it much, but I think it was thirty-five a card. So I don't know what that's about. Well, he's got to be making profit, so he must be able to submit for twenty-five. Yeah, so something like, I don't. What he, I don't yeah, completely understand it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked into this much, but yeah, I did see that he was doing that. So that was kind of interesting. Man, do I'm you like to buy those BGS cards now? I know. I was literally thinking I'm the thinking same thing. I'm like, hey, bro, I, I know get. what we're talking about after this episode ends. <laughs> um. Bro, you like the SGC slabs? Aren't they just white and black labels? Like, they're kind of boring. The, the label that itself, I feel like, is flawed. But the card, it's called Tuxedos. Okay. Because it's completely black, and it kind of looks cool. Like, the entire background. So, you know, PSA slabs are, like, kind of clear. Yeah. Uh, SGC is black. So okay. It looks so, it, like, oh, sits on a nice background. That. Yeah. Um, Dude, we were talking about... Have you heard of the... Vince, have you heard of this company, HGA, yet? The grading yeah, company? Yeah, they do the, like... They use, like digital or something yeah, yeah like dude what so yeah tell us yeah. you were you were like kind of like diving into a bit of hga with me tell tell uh, just a little more about them and what they do and what their angles are on the market yeah so i don't grade with hga so i'm definitely far from the professional hga guy i'm gonna cut you off real quick how when did they come on the scene Shit, For, like when did they the like scene? become like relatively relevant? when do i think like a couple they probably ago. came on the scene four months ago i think that long ago yeah. okay, okay maybe Three, two to, i don't know two okay. to four somewhere in that range um and they grade uh electronically or something like that mm -hmm. and you send them but yeah. they only so, no bias. so they do yes, like releases no every week or every other week my information could be slightly off because i don't actually use them so yeah. i'm not like a hundred percent sure on but i get the idea and then they grade like you know, 2,500 cards a week, mm -hmm. right? A figure in that sort of range. And mm -hmm. then they cut it off. So like they release it online, like these spots to grade. And then, oh, and then they sell out. Almost. Yeah, and then they sell out. We're going to start oh. reselling those spots. Yeah, we're going to start reselling HGA spots. Reselling the HGA spots. <laughs> but you yeah. can only grade like a certain amount of cards. And then they, but their turnaround time is pretty quick. It's definitely an interesting idea. It prevents the issues that all these other grading companies are running into. Yeah, right. And then they also, their big thing is they color match. They this do is color sick. Blast. Have you seen this? The, the, have like you seen the, what they look like? The, the slabs? Itself? They're they're sick, dude. But they, what do you mean they color match? Like the card, the, you know the label at the top of the slabs? Yeah. Um, they match the colors with the card. So it looks cool. Yeah. It looks like the colors. Of the so cards. if you've got like a Mike Trout oh. card and it's got like a red overlay yeah. in the background, like a deep red or something, like they will match the label to the card and, and, and they look, they're highly presentable. Mm. I, th I think it's sick because like if, you know, what are these PSA cards? A lot of the time they're like display pieces and like whatever yeah. on your wall or, or something like that or, you know, in, in uh, your collectibles case. So I, I just think it makes them that much more presentable and yeah. cool. And they mm. ran into an issue with that actually. So they also were doing like, they do some designs, like they'll throw like oh, an actual, I saw the you saw, Hawaiian they'll throw on like some something. art on there, like actual art, not just colors. Yeah. Okay. They throw on this little Hawaiian type picture, I saw that, yeah. something like that on the label. Yeah. And it turned out to be a copyright picture. Oh no. Of what somebody, and then you know how people are in the hobby are, they'll just, they just canceled HGA instantly for messing up. So dumb. And, um, like nobody actually cares about the cop. I mean, yeah, of it's. It sucks, but yeah, you know. They, people, it's not like old school hobbyist guys yeah. use that to try to discredit yeah, HGA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even school. like HGA, but I'm okay. not going to do that. And um, anyways, so they ended up like contacting the guy who made the art, gave them money, ended up creating like a little partnership type thing, I believe. And cool. it all turned out yeah. to be good. But yeah, they got in trouble. A uh, little bit of trouble for that. Dang. Um, cool. Yeah, that's crazy. HGA. So do you think that they're going to... Well, the the... First thing that really like caught my ear when you were describing them is that like they do electronic grading like that, in my opinion, is the future and in, a, in everyone's opinion, that's the future. But the reason it, I have a theory that the reason because PSA has got all the capital in the world, like they could be pursuing electronic grading like they could be fucking the fr uh, leading the frontier with that. And they probably will eventually. But it would almost like if PSA offered like an amazing standardized grading system that was like completely computer automated and it was perfect and tens were always tens and nines were always nines and you could resubmit it a thousand times and a nine would always be a right. nine um that would almost it would almost like destroy the foundation of all the grades up until that up until that point because it's like 
I personally have had PSA car like tens that are just horribly off center and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's there's a human error to all PSA grades up until right now. Yeah. And so I don't know. I think that it would almost create like a weird vacuum in their own of the, for their own products and their own labels if they were to go computer automated like that. Yeah. I don't know. That's my theory on on why PSA hasn't done it. Yeah, I don't know. That could be interesting. They they automate a ton of stuff now. Like in the past two they years, they've started for, automating the process, you know, and all yeah. that junk, putting so, slabs together. But they're not automate automating grading. The actual right? grading itself yeah. is not automated. I think they automate like everything else now, though, which is pretty cool. They have to for the volume that they're doing. I just couldn't yeah. see how like. I mean, yeah, I, it, the graders have to just be like sitting there, not even really handling cards for it to be like efficient at all. You yeah. know what I mean? If yeah. they were running back and forth, having to like get a stack of cards <laughs> and bring it back to their desk, you know what I mean? The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. It's insane, man. Everything like the whole industry has just been forced to scale in, in crazy ways. Even, uh, we've seen more, more changes uh, with release methods from these, from these retailers, Walmart, Target, um, just like re retail product releases. So target, I feel like every time, every time we talk about target, they've, they've drastically changed yep. something with, with how they're doing releases. So now it's, it's not like a text message. Remember they tried like a text message queue system. Last time I was what the, the hell podcast, happened to that? Dude? That's yeah. what we were talking about. Yeah. What a text message system that, that I don't even know if they really ever got that off the ground. The text did. message thing. No. Not that I heard of. They, they definitely uh, implemented the hard limits, like the three per on, uh, like on, on every PID or every SKU or whatever. So they did that. But now, releases for sp uh, sports card, Pokemon, basically any desirable card products are Fridays at 8 a.m., like at every Target from my understanding ac across the country. Yep. And what that's causing, like it, <laughs> it's kind of a meme already. Yeah. Every Friday now or Thursday night, frankly, you'll have lo people lining up, dude, for 20, like 20 hours, 24 hours, 12 hours to get like three <laughs> like cello packs or gravity packs or yeah. just like low uh low pretty low amount of product it's it's crazy it's madness to it's me it's wild yeah i can't believe it in my opinion it's still not a solution because nah, like no change you still yeah they will change it they don't want people loitering and like waiting outside for, it's dude what target that is not a good look no. to have people just camped out like that of their and with like tents and stuff or yeah. chairs like they don't want that um they'll change it i think in my opinion, bro, if if I bet that these retailers want to release online only, like if there was no bot problem, yeah, I bet that it would be a no brainer. It would just be yeah. oh online only immediately. Yep. But because of the bot problem, they have to like appease the the regular guys, the regular customers, hobbyists a little bit, and that's why they still are holding on and trying to make some in store stuff work. That's my opinion. And they could do like a foot sites thing. You know how you do it through the app, through a raffle? Oh, Let's like, a, re at like a reservation raffle? Reservation, you just show up, get yours. There's no line or anything. Right. You have two days to get it. Then they could release them. I kind of thought that's what the SMS thing was going to be. That's at what some I thought. Point. I feel yeah. like... I feel like that's the way to go if you yeah. want to release in store. It's just so like uh, you know you compare them to foot sites, and I just think of the business models like Foot Locker, brick and mortar f shoe stores in 2021 without hyped or profitable or, or hyped releases. Um, they it, it you know they need those to survive. They need retro releases. They need hyped Air Forces and Yeezys. They need these uh, to generate foot traffic in their stores to keep brick and mortar shoe industry alive. Target and Walmart, they don't need to sell. Yeah. I mean, they're they we've talked that, that is a a little tiny drop in the bucket for their net revenue um, or net profit. So it's just. There's no way that they would care enough to, to do a whole system like systematically like Foot Locker does. Maybe. I mean, they could afford it. Uh, either company, Walmart or Target. And Target seems to hate resellers that much that they yeah. I could see Target do some just like spend a billion dollars yeah. for no reason just to stop yeah. resellers on something. It, it's crazy. They uh they really do care, bro. If yeah, they no. did a system, it wouldn't just be for it'd be for anything like consoles and or like cards. a new Funko. Oh, be a new some console. kind of new system for everything that was yeah they could, that card. would be interesting yeah. yeah if you do only demand yeah any really item in demand, demand you yeah. have to do it that way that's not a bad idea well because i mean shoot man even like we've, pools we yeah even pools, pools yeah anything like that i feel like they should have a 
Imagine them doing a raffle. They system should have for a pools. system, whether they will, who knows? <laughs> That'd be awesome. It's kind of crazy that people in charge of these companies just can't figure it out. Oh, they can't. They dude. get paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars, like salary to figure yeah. out release strategies. Uh huh. And they can't. And it's like let's do text messages. Right. Okay. Let's just do Fridays because then Fridays are cool. Wasn't <laughs> it like <laughs> what? Wasn't it just eight a.m. for a while, and now it's just eight a.m. Fridays? <laughs> Who like the I, they're all yeah targets dude. before were just random because you know stocked by a uh, just, oh random, the XL vendor yeah, yeah. so it's like whenever, yeah they just stock whatever whenever. time they feel like showing up I mean if they want to show up at four a.m. it really depends on your your store remember yes yeah. like oh my store is either Thursday from two to six or Fridays between ten and two right yeah so I think dude I. Still believe that the future is going to be online only for some of this stuff. Like eventually, uh, we see retailers taking massive steps. Uh, even just a couple weeks back, or this past week of Target, they they released uh, NBA Prism, some NBA Prism products, and those were able to be checked out manually. Bots, yeah. like there was there was sparing amount, like pretty small amounts of bot success you saw from yeah. you know a few major retail bots, but. Other than that, it was vast majority, like, just, like, if you had monitors and you went manually and you spammed that shit, then you could check out. I was saying that was pretty good because the average person isn't going to know the product link directly, so you had to search it. So, you like, if somebody is... stock, right? No. You At just had first, to search the product. You, you had to search, I thought, by out of... Because it was showing out of stock if you just searched the product. At first, mm. it ended up changing midway through the release, I thought. I don't no. know. Our monitors picked it up. I'm not really sure. So not the no, I, no, I'm like, but, not no the, but is this what we're doing? Did, I, I can start this. If you did NBA, <laughs> if you did NBA basketball, not to get, but if you searched a product, yeah, then it would show that. And you, in order to add it, you could just click right there, even though there was like it would show all the products, right? Like nine yeah. different NBA products. Yeah. Well, the Prism had product had add to cart right there. For, oh, that. it was yeah from that yeah. yeah from that page from the search. So like the norm, like I'm trying to say that dude, it was possible for somebody we're like burning loops right now. Whatever, dude. Yeah, we kind of did. It's all we'll, good. We'll just cut it. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> we're not burning <laughs> loops, dude. I'm kidding. It's like one percent. Like what? There's gonna be like maybe five or ten people that listen to this and they're like, oh my god, thank you guys for that gem. Oh my god, don't and that's what guys. I don't need in a cook group anymore. Right, I got it all. That's that's the sauce. <laughs> that's what GFNF is. Right, just that. It's just that's one. It, dude. Yeah, dude, join GFNF. We have one target have one method, thing. and that's it. <laughs> um, dude, let's talk about just. Uh, new like new products being or yeah new product lines being introduced to the hobby. Like we know Panini and Tops like they have major incentive to just keep printing, keep printing, keep printing, make their billions. You know, I like it. Uh, and I I like it too. I'm definitely definitely enjoying it. What are some of the newer newer products uh that are like rumored to be coming out in the in the coming months? I I know of uh like obviously Select NFL Retail. Yep. This was the first year that they did Select NFL Retail. Um, when you tell me about like a UFC, yeah, UFC Prism, I that's, believe is releasing retail. It's showing up on like the Target or Walmart sheets, you know, like the seller sheets that that's sick. those dudes get. So yeah, I think that UFC should do well. Prism cards. Yeah, it's good. What about really NASCAR? Cool. These will be first year. They have NASCAR Prism. I always come back. They do have NASCAR yeah. Prism. Yeah. Nobody cares about NASCAR but you though. Yeah, like, you are the only one. Just wait till I get those but pe- mockers, baby. UFC is like one. pretty relevant. Um, yeah. Like and especially recently in the hobby and stuff, people F one becoming giant. Yeah. What's up with that, dude? That's that's insane. I was calling yeah. these things. You were yeah, calling out the obscure sports. Cards, I was close. After this, I'm gonna go look for BGS <laughs> UFC Formula cards. One. No, yep. Formula, <laughs> Formula One. One. Yes, dude. literally, that's the first thing in my head. For Who's real? the guy that's really good uh, um, Formula One right now? I know what Harris he looks like. Um, he's shit, a big. What's his name? He's really popular. I'm, dude, don't look Hamilton. Hamilton. Yes, Lewis Hamilton. I almost yeah. bought one a couple months after I failed on the Schumacher. Dude, so I'm gonna go and look Hamilton. for Hamilton. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's like interesting the best, how these other like different sports, not like baseball and football, mm-hmm. and basketball, are like becoming popular. People it's who crazy. actually know about F1 are gonna hate to see us talking about F1. 
Oh, in soccer. Like, we couldn't think of Lewis Hamilton. He's, I know he's, like, the biggest guy. <laughs> oh, he's massive. Forget it, man. Just buy the sealed product. Uh, that's Sell right. It. Yep. Um, but, yeah, Prism UFC cards. I think those yeah. will definitely hit. I would there, think, yeah. Yeah, there's, like. there's rumors that they're going to be doing select NBA retail this year, too. Yeah, that'll be. I assume if so they're doing they select do first off retail. the line. Uh, yeah, they'll do hobby products, yeah. but we're talking retail products. They won't do first oh. off the line. Yeah, that's exclusive for hobby. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we're just talking uh, cuz so in mm. years past they've done select NFL hobby. Yeah. But this year was the first and people really liked select cards. Like yeah. they li- they really like select. They're sweet. So this year was the first year they did select NFL retail. Mm-hmm. And in, same thing with NBA. So in years past they've done select NBA hobby, but they've never done select NBA retail. Okay. So like Walmart, Target, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, but this year, yeah, they're, they're room that they're going to be doing it, which is sick. Yeah. And Careful. usually, uh, select is really low print, uh, really low print run yeah. compared to prism. Cause prism releases through all those retail and, you know, they just uh, print a ton of it because mm-hmm. people love it and mm-hmm. selects always low. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens this year. Now that select is also retail. It's a good um, point. And, you know, even like hobby, how much are they going to print? I mean, you'll be able to tell with just PSA, uh, that's pretty much how you tell how much they printed. You just like look how at PSA many, population. Yeah. yeah, the pop reports. Yeah, so it'll be it'll definitely be interesting to compare to last year's products. It's crazy. Um, dude, hobby products in general recently have been insane. I we were talking yesterday about just what ho- what these hobby boxes were priced at before this year. Do you know what the retails like the MSRP vents on like these hobby boxes that are like uh, Dutch auction on Panini box will sell out at like two grand. Guess what? Yeah. Like the MSRP is on these, dude. It's, it's like a hundred bucks. Are you kidding? Like, yeah, like the what? the MSRP. Yes. So in oh years past, gosh. like basically, uh, that's what that's what Panini let them go for. So they'd like drop it retail or you know MSRP, and and then if you could like get a bunch of them, I mean, dude, just imagine that. Imagine if we were getting these hobby products for msrp like 100 200 bucks and then selling for a couple thousand a box i think that's what the car stores i think car stores get get them below msrp dude i think yes car this is a this is like uh this is like a the money, money, ever. Jake. This is the biggest loop That's ever, why dude. We're making, we're making That's why we're, st- we're all, yeah, we're starting card shops. We're, 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 oh, I we're we forgot the talk. Wait, this, but we're <laughs> yeah, starting I don't a card store. Yeah, care about cracking beats. Yes, anymore. Yeah, we're we're, pa- we're beyond <laughs> that. To get a store, dude. So yeah, they get so card shops get them what? get these hobby products priced ac- according to like profitability at MSRP. So if MSRP is one fifty, okay, I'll start, I'll start with the money. Hobby product sells out on Dutch auction at two thousand dollars hypothetically. Mm-hmm. MSRP is one fifty. Hobby shops are charged according to uh, like as if they would sell those products at one fifty. So they're paying like sixty for for a hob for yeah, dude. This is this is worse than skate shops back during dunks. I know. Yeah, these ser- card stores are making so much more money. So some card what? stores will sell extremely cheap, like Select. I think my local card store was selling select football hobby boxes for a thousand bucks. What? And I, I don't know. They're like sixteen hundred. Uh, not first off the line. You okay. Know, just like bait or just normal. It's they're like sixteen hundred selling for a thousand. I don't know what. I don't know what price they actually pay for this stuff, but I know it's I know it's low. But That's they don't crazy. give any either. Like she gets a pretty uh, limited a case, amount of a product, case, which you know oh. just twelve. That's nothing. So they get bought. But quick. if you're actually getting them for sixty bucks or whatever per box, you're still making a right. smooth making over ten grand for just a, pays yeah. pays rent at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Let's. Uh, yeah. I mean, who's the who's the absolute stud genius that that like locked in the Dutch auction format with Panini? It was like me. that guy deserves the biggest raise. It was you. Wow, how much did they pay you for that? And why did you do that to us resellers? Like, because it sounds like getting stuff for MSRP is way superior hmm. to Dutch auction. But, um, bro, like, th- just think about whoever, whoever, lo- like, that was such a play by yeah. Panini to, to start capitalizing on the aftermarket values and and you know the the market um, increasing like it has. Because yeah, they're just making hand hand over fist money, bro. On, on these hobby products, they'll be. People buying at four grand a box, yeah. to, all the way down to sellout point, and yeah. all of the above is still way higher than MSRP. It's insane. Can but you imagine like, Yeezy Supply doing that? That would be sick. 
That would it would be, be sick. Dude. That would be that, that would, would be suck, crazy. dude. Oh, bro, they they produce. So, we'd be we'd be buying like the high stock Yeezys for like one sixty. <laughs> you get all the yeah. different providers. There'll be providers that provide sellout. Well, estimates. then you sell out I estimates. Say, yeah, I mean, then they'd be selling those shoes that didn't sell out. They'd sell out. Right. I mean, you know, I, they'd put the three the three eighties once they hit one hundred and thirty like bucks. I don't four th- hours after everyone's buying them. It's not in line with like their the like Yeezy. It's important to them that the stuff is never sitting sitting like at all. Like I don't think that it would be in line with their business model to allow stuff to go under MSRP like that because you know like they don't allow sites to discount and if any brick and mortar yeah. store like um I I had a, a really good buddy that managed a, a JD Sports that that like taught me he, he told me all about like how strict Adidas was with their Yeezy line and like he's like yeah man after x amount of days like four days three days on shelf he's like we have to send back every pair take it out yeah, yeah take it, it it's not allowed for to be easy on day shelf. yeah yeah literally and and i'm sure that stock goes to yeezy day and um different things like that which is rumored to happen again this year dude good freaking segue man what the hell that was that smooth, was smooth bro that, that was nice. are you kidding me it's professional 200 iq <laughs> yes man so yeah yeezy day um they're saying is actually going to happen this year mm-hmm. we skipped this previous year though so I, I was a little skeptical at first until like Yeezy Mafia and a few of the other like big Yeezy leak accounts started confirming it. So now I, I think that uh, we can we can look forward to a Yeezy day this year. Uh, August 21st? Something like that. August and 21st. It's supposed to be reflectives coming back. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, clouds, right? Leak. I was seeing like black reflectives on that oh, Twitter yes. post we were looking clouds. at. I don't know who posted that, but. It was. It was uh, it was pi- it was pi- Pirates. Uh, oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Black reflectives. I think there was like that pink pair that was. Was it like the Asia exclusive? Gotta get Kodai yeah. and the cloud. The cloud clouds. reflectives. That would yeah. be sick. A few super hot pairs. So it's insane, man. Um, I I love I love stuff like that. I like that. Adi- I think Adidas has found uh like a pretty good balance with the Yeezy line as far as like feeding resellers and making their profits. Yeah. I I think that they found like a pretty decent balance. They're good people. They're, dude, they're they're, they're good. good. Pe- they're good people. They gave us Christmas gift with the black release. They did bless us with those bread three fifties, yeah. bro. That was that crazy. Was, we yeah. need those. What are those high Yeezys? Are they seven fifties? The uh, high, yeah, yep. t- yeah. Oh, we need those. Oh, the, wait, the, the yeah, the boots, boots are seven fifty. No, boots, not the the are high seven. Yeah, with the strap. Yeah. I want a pair of those. Yes, I mean, those, dude. Those, those were on sick. Easy Day, the last Easy Day. They were ago. like super low. Yeah. My TKS had them in my my banks, and I had them there in the manual. Like you could go to the browser. Yeah, oh, and yeah. you couldn't check out. Man, it was I was like those Kodai. To come back. Those are nice, dude. Easy that Easy Day. It was Kodai hitting everything. It was, it was Kodai dom- dominating. That was insane. I remember oh, that shit, remember dude. That. Yeah. Um, and creams. You could get creams like. They were sitting. You they were they ended easy yeah, day. Yeah, they were sitting, and yes. everybody was saying, "Don't was buy, manually. don't buy." I remember yeah. that. Yep, on my phone. Yeah. How about? I uh, mean, we were talking about Yeezy's plan. How like good they've done to resellers. How about like how much Foot Locker just fucks everyone all the time, dude? Foot, foot sites can just literally jump. Like, oh, dude, foot. Like there, oh, so many people. <laughs> so many people that were like foot site heavy oriented for like releases. I'm not talking about mid restocks and Air Forces and like brick flip. Like that's a different category, right? Yeah. But for like foot site first come first serve releases, there's like let's go back to a year ago or eight ten months ago. It was kind of like everyone would hit. If you were washed, you would hit one to five pairs. If you were a god, you would hit 80 to 200 pairs. And if you were manual and you were persistent, then you could maybe get a pair or two on the app sometimes. You know what I mean? Like that was not a perfect world, but it it worked. And and people, you know, they were... uh, a priority and a focus and people actually liked going for, for full locker and stuff. Now here we are where they're just like, you know, we talked extensively about the different types of protections. Uh, we talked with Brian on the last episode about the new protections that they're pulling up and pulling down and they'll put up a new, new antibody and they'll pull it off and a new Q system and then they'll pull it off, but then they'll put it back for a restock and they're all over the place. But the, the main thing is that no one hits foot sites manually anymore. Nobody like normal, Sneakerheads do not try to get shoes from Foot Locker anymore. Like no, it's literally not possible because of their like, uh, like cash, like the way the way that they like cash their requests. And Brian explained it. They cash it so like 
if you were on the page manually and you click 10 and a half and you clicked add a cart, if it was out of stock then, it caches that response. So like if the 10 and a half came in stock a minute later, you wouldn't, you would click it again and it would say, oh, we've cached that this guy is with the out of stock response. With out of stock. Yep. And that, you can't that, hit, man. I would you love, cannot hit, man. I would love to hear competent, smart. like, like James Say it's Wynn. smart. Z <laughs> man, is that what he just said? Oh, it's smart. Yeah. I, oh no! Yeah. I, I, very smart. No, yeah, that's a good I idea. would love to hear like the developers for fucking for Foot Locker. Yeah, like, talk to like J M Wind because yeah. I feel like he'd be like, "You guys are just like putting chicken on a fucking hamburger." And yeah, just, they're throwing all this shit on it. That does, it's like you've got Qit. Yeah, you've got Datadome. You've got what Akamai. You've, you're just throwing shit in and seeing what like can stop everything possible and then and it creates a, a horrible experience Awful. for like a normal customer bro so if you just go, go to like footlocker.com it responds and acts like a website from 2006 it's so uh, bad because of because it's of the so... um it's very janky and slowed down and unresponsive and it's because like someone showed me like if, if you look and like whatever if, you, if you're running a program to see uh like all the data packets that are you know being collected and sent back and forth from Foot Locker, bro. It's insane. The amount of data and like fucking encryption on everything you do on their website is a thousand fold a normal <laughs> website. So it yeah. just creates a horrible I think experience. That's the first time I said the F word and it's because it's so bad. It's so bad. It is awful. I know. Seriously, dude. I'm, I, uh, I don't know. Foot sites are foot. Yeah. Oh, on the podcast. You're yeah. So bad. Which is because it's <laughs> awful. I'm saying it it's is so, so bad. bad. I had such an emotional response because it's so bad, dude. I know. Our, yeah, rip to foot sites, man. Like old, old. I uh, I don't know. I I miss old foot site releases, but nowadays they're yeah. for a lot of people are just like highly discouraging. You can you, don't get me wrong. You you can still hit. There's still bots like this. As long as they're getting stock, someone's hitting it. Someone's getting I think it in Ganesh hand. Ganesh did well recently. Yeah, like, and some, some there's there's top performers yeah. like Haya did uh, exceptionally well on. A, like a oh, UNC like restock yeah. one, but that's the name of the game, bro. Like, unless you own like every big bot, private subnets, and you got like money to blow, like to it's a, not to even create... every big bot. The big bots get clipped because they have True. so many users. So then, data don't. It's the small bots. It'll be you like two hundred bot that has four hundred users. And then in a month, it has 4,000 and you're clipped again. And then it's, yeah, exactly. And then you got to go get this other one. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Industry is always changing, man. It, being ready and, and able to adapt is mo as important now as it ever has been yeah. it, as far as releases, bro. Because like something could be a huge moneymaker for a reseller A last. I mean, dude, like perfect example. I, I have I have people I know. I know like there's one of your uh, staff members comes to mind in particular that was just like app had a godly in-store loop for sports cards locked in yep. and, you know, just making bank, just crushing absolutely impressive hauls. Every week he had every plug locked in, but then like some stuff changes that's above your head, like target hard blocks or they have a hard set release method now that you can't get around no matter if you have a plug at the store or not. Like you just got to be ready to adapt. Same with like foot site botting. Um, however you make your money as a reseller, like it's stuff gets clipped and there's always something new. Um, I don't even know. So crypt, crypto, like GPUs have been in, incredibly hot recently. Yeah. Uh, reselling GPUs is insane. There's like that saying that in a gold rush, um, you don't get rich, you don't get rich mining. You don't get rich shoveling gold. You get rich selling shovels. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so like, that's the argument to why just selling GPUs is the cook right now. Obviously building your own, like building your own mining setup is also, um, but that's kind of competitive, man. Weren't you saying Vince that with, with Ethereum's price increase, oh, super competitive. Yeah. So you would think Nvidia would make like back to that quote, Nvidia should double the price of their, their hardware. Right. Something about them cutting. Have you heard about them like cutting off in future GPUs? They already did that. They're gonna do. It's tell me all about optics. that. What's that about? It's all, so on their thirty sixty RTXs, not the founders TI. Yeah. They made it so like it was supposed to be about a fifty percent decrease in the ability for it to mine just Ethereum, which is really stupid, anyways, because you could use the card to mine thousands of other different coins. Oh. But that being said, it was just them basically saying. Like, hey, gamers, we're going to try to stop mining. Right. Literally, you can just like, it's so easy to turn that 
Oh. It's like a firmware thing that my buddy was saying. Oh. Got it. So it was just all optics, like for sure. Uh, just them trying to like appease their primary clientele, which is That's gamers it. and like techies. That's it. Makes sense. Hmm. Um, cool. You guys want to hit this week's leaks at all? Yep. A few upcoming uh, sure. leaked shoes uh, that are rumored or confirmed to be coming out in the near future. So um, let's start with the Halloween dunks this year. Initial thoughts. They suck. Fire. Yeah. That's my thought. Vince, you like them? Yeah, and I was telling these guys I have a couple of the older ones, and they're so sick. Yes, they I just are. like I haven't looked at them in a long time. Yeah, but like the detail on them. Yep. And so the same is coming from the the next Halloween, so that's sick. Right, with glow in the dark on the midsole, and then I think like the patterns, the Halloween designs and and patterns all over the shoe. Those are also. I want to see the toe box because you on the. On the Halloweens from a couple of years ago, the toe box has the pumpkin smiling. On oh, the toe. okay. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder, yeah. I haven't seen the toe box on these ones. I if wonder, there's anything like unique on this I don't this think too. I've seen the heel either because okay. the heel on those ones say trick, uh, treat. I remember that. So I don't know. All I've seen is the side pictures and yeah. I don't think the bottoms either. So. I, I remember I got... Uh, Tongue could be different too. I hit a couple pairs of those from Premier. I think it was like Premier Skate and I sold them for like 50 or $60 profit. I sold one or two. Yeah, I saw the few. What are they at now? Just the, just 500s. the old. Okay. They Makes haven't sense. really gone anywhere. Yep. Huh. I'm going to buy some more now that I'm just saying this, to be honest. Right, because of the next. Uh, yeah, Halloween. Because Halloween around. could. I mean, yeah. I think they're a sick shoe and have a lot of detail. So mm-hmm. The Air Force Ones will also be. You know how they do like the Halloween Air Force One? Yeah. I like those. I think like, oh, yeah, they the did like the skeleton ones. ones. And then the before yeah. is black and the yeah. year before is white. Yeah. I want to go buy all those. I like them. You I like them? I love them. I, I like the, uh, the bl- uh, not the black, the the white with the, the, with the, the white I think is yeah. my favorite from those ones. Yeah, the orange I ones I couldn't, I couldn't I like rock. I like the orange. I, I couldn't wear them, the but I like them a lot. I haven't seen the orange in person. For sure. Huh. Yeah, dude. I, I like how, I like when they do like themes. Like 420. That's, dude. Their 420 dunks are, are I don't have this on this week's leaks, but let's. Uh, aren't there pictures of this year's 420 dunks already? I don't remember. I haven't seen Why there am I are. forgetting this? There are. H- how did we not put this on, I on the list? I was looking at the old ones so much. Whoever made the list needs fired. I, I agree. Whoever Dude, made the I'm list look need it. fired. Dude, I got to look it yeah, up. Yeah, look it up. Look it up. Um, yeah, we got to see this year's 420 dunks because I'm pretty sure I did see a mock-up for these. You brought it up and I immediately go, oh man, I got to look at the purple ones. The skunk. Uh, oh yeah. The limited ones. Yes. Yeah. I always I do love the how they do different ones for different themes. Like yeah, they make the uh, Christmas. Wait, dunks. it's the Maui. Yep. It's the, the Maui. Dunks. The Maui. Okay, yeah, that's it. The Tearaway Maui. The Hawaii ones. That is their four twenty dunk this the, year. It's called the Maui Wowie. Is that what you were showing? Maui Wowie. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, those are sick. I like those. Makes sense. That would be a four twenty dunk. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. uh, those are they're sick. all right. They're not. They're. I don't think they're close to the other ones. No, yeah. no, no, no. Not as far as like. Well, the other ones were 420 pairs, too. Yeah. So. Dumb limited. Yeah, in, and numbered out of 422, which yes. is uh, smart. That's a grail. Um, For real. And then the P-Rod dunks, the Paul, Paul Rod, a new Paul Rodriguez dunk. Those are awesome. Super colorful. Um, uh-huh. I think I think they're pretty cool. I, I don't know, man. They remind I, me of the Street Hawkers a little bit. Just I mean, in like how they the set them up. They give me like what the yeah, vibes, what the, too. Yeah. And what those, they're like, what those are like 10 grand. Yeah. So I think... I think the P rods could do huge numbers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, because they probably won't be. I don't know. Because those what those are so old. Yeah, I know. That's why. Right. There's yeah. gonna, these are gonna be more of a gr. They'll no, probably yeah. be like the ha- the hawkers at six or seven. Makes oh, sense. Oh, well, six or seven is pretty big for a dunk nowadays. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeezy D Rose collab. You guys see these? They're oh, like the. Yeah. They look. Everyone's saying they're I'm like. They a- look like fish. Like fish. They give fish vibes. Yeah. Um. Dude, this is a perfect example of Kanye West having his finger on the pulse of society and pop culture more than anyone else. Like, just like the foam runners, just like his sandals, just like his dad shoes style silhouettes, just like everything else that Kanye's put out. When we first saw the mock-ups, people people fucking mock it and make fun of it. But but by the time they release it, they're going to... Their marketing strategy is going to be great. 
and they're going to be insane. They're going to be impossible to get, and they're going to sell for a ton of money. It's like an acquired yeah. taste. It is an acquired taste for real. Like the foam runners, bro. Remember They'll how take hard a they few got? Years and then people will be wearing them. Yeah. Uh, for example, the foam runners were mm -hmm. like a meme when they yeah. first Everybody did the pictures. Hated them. Everyone hated them. Yeah. But I actually saw like this was a a, a tweet on like normal Twitter, not sneaker Twitter. Yeah. It was like. Some like uh, it was like a girl was like a nurse. She's just like a nurse somewhere, oh, yeah. and she tweeted at Kanye West. She's like, it was something like, "Hey, uh, Kanye, please gr this shoe. I'm a nurse, and these are great for 12 hour shifts on my feet. There's a lot of people in the industry that would like love this, and it got like 700 thousand likes or something, and like 200 thousand retweets or something, hmm. just massive. And I'm like, wow, yeah, like he did, like dude, Kanye's a Kanye is. He's that guy, man. He's like really got his finger on the pulse of pop culture and and fashion, in my opinion. It's crazy. I agree. But yeah. uh, uh, last one I had on the list was the Paradunks, um, the new Paradunks. I, I love Para. I think that Para Nike collabs are, are sick and they're always like really nice looking. I don't know. Yeah. What do you guys think about these ones? I like them. Uh, they're nice. I don't like them as much as the previous ones. Yeah. They came out, they came out with blazers. The low blazers and the dunks yeah. at the same time with yes. the same theme. Yeah. I like that design a little bit more, but I think these are still sick. I like them. Me too. Me too. Um, I don't know why I just randomly thought of this shoe. It's not even like, this is a really old shoe. Remember the like Steve Harrington Earth Day Air Force Ones? With the, <laughs> so is that the one with yeah. the, world, the globe yes. on it? Yes. The globe. The globe. The guy like the globe block. Yeah, they're, they're like eight, up. nine hundred or something now, bro. They're like, it went to the absolute moon. I don't know what, what just made me think of those, but I'm like, dude, I, I saw the other day someone posted. I'm like, oh my God, that's just, I, I remember I found, uh, I found three pairs at a Nike store, like not even a year ago, maybe like 10 months ago or something like that. Mm. I got pretty lucky. Uh, but yeah, no, big stuff. Um, summer's coming, spring's coming. I think people are going to be out more wearing their shoes. Uh, the the industry's in a good spot right now. I, I, I don't know. I feel confident about shoes going into summertime, sports cards going into summer, dude. I think it's just going to continue. Like Optic NBA, possibly Select NBA retail. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got all kinds of stuff coming. Not slowing down at all. So. Nope. Yeah, I have no closing thoughts, man. That's it for me. I don't know cool. about you guys. So That's it. cool. Pleasure always, Z Med. Thanks yep. for coming, dude. We'll do it again. So appreciate Sounds it, guys. Good. Yep. All right.